Welcome to NSG 313, Prenatal Midwifery. Study Section 1, Female Pelvics. Introduction. In this study section, we will be discussing the female pelvics. The woman's body is abducted by its shape and functions for unique feminine roles, for example, childbearing. It is important to be familiar with the anatomical features of the woman to understand the process of reproduction. Learning outcomes. At the end of this study section, you should be able to 1. I like the anatomy and various types of pelvics. 2. Explain the four types of pelvics and its features. 3. Differentiate the normal pelvics from abnormal. The anatomy of the pelvics. Below the anatomy of the pelvis and its various types will be explained. 1. Innominate bone. Innominate bones are also referred to as pelvic bones. There are four pelvic bones. Two innominates, nameless or e bones. One sacrum. One cocosy. Two innominate bones. Each innominate bone is composed of three parts, namely the ilium, the ischium, the public bone. The ilium is a large flared out part. When the hand is placed on E, it rests on the hilia crest, which is the upper border. At the front of the iliac crest is the anterior superior iliac spine. Below it is the anterior inferior iliac spine. At the end of the iliac crest is the posterior superior and the posterior inferior iliac spines. The concave anterior surface of the ilium is the iliac fossa. The ischium is the thick lower part. It has a large prominence known as the ischial tuberosity on which the body rests when sitting. Behind and a little above the tuberosity is an inward projection. The Asian pine in labor, the station of the fertile head is estimated in relation to the Asian spines. The pubic bone forms the anterior part. It has a body and two projections, the superior ramus and the inferior ramus. The two pubic bones meet at the symphysis. Pubis and the two interior rami form the pubic arc. The place enclosed by the body of the pubic bone, the rami and the ischium is called the obturator for rami. The innominable bone contains the acetabulum. One of the lower border of the innominable bone are two curves, the greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch. Image to show ilium, ischium and pubic bones. Iliac crest, helium, acetabulum, ischium, pubis. Image of sacrum and cocosis, the pelvic joints. There are four pelvic joints, one syphysis pubis, two sacroiliac joints, one sacroigeal joint. The civic pubic is formed at the junction of the two pubic bones, which are united by a pad of cartilage, as shown by the image. The sacroiliac joints are the strongest joints in the body. They join the sacrum to the ilium, and disconnect the spine to the pelvis. The sacrococcygeal joint is formed where the base of the cocosy articulates with the tip of the sacrum. During pregnancy, endocrine activities accuses the ligament to soften, which allows the joint to give. This may provide more room for the fetal head as it passes through the pelvis. The symphysis pubix may separate slightly in later pregnancy. If it widens appreciably, the degree of movement permitted may give rise to pain on walking. The sacrococcygeal gel joint permits the cocosyl to be deflected backwards during the birth of the head. Pelvic ligaments. Each of the pelvic joints is held together by ligaments. Interpublic ligaments as the symphysis pubis, sacroiliac ligaments, sacrococcygeal gel ligaments, sacrotuberous ligaments. Sacrocipinous ligaments. The sacrococcygeal gel joint is formed where the base of the cocosyl articulates with the tip of the sacrum. During pregnancy, endocrine activities causes the ligament to soften, which allows the joint to give. This may provide more room for the fetal head as it passes through the pelvic. The civis pubic may separate slightly in later pregnancy. If it widens appreciably, the degree of movement permitted may give rise to pain on walking. The sacrococcygeal gel joint permits the cocosyl to be deflected backward during the birth of the head. The sacrotuberous ligament runs from the sacrum to the 
ischial tuberosity and the sacropenius ligaments form the sacrum to the ischial spine. Diagram. These two ligaments across the sciatic notch and form the posterior wall of the pelvic outlet. The true pelvis is the bony canal through which the fetus must pass during birth. It has a brim, a cavity, and an outlet. The pelvic brim is round except where the sacral promontory projects into it. The promontory and wings of the sacrum forms its posterior border. The iliac bones, its lateral borders, and the pubic bones, its anterior border. The landmarks on the pelvic brim are 1. Sacral promontory 2. Sacral ala or wing 3. Sacroiliac joints 4. Ilopectin line, which is the edge formed at the inward aspect of the ilium 5. Ilopectineal eminence which is a roughened area formed where the superior ramus of the pubic bones meet the ilium 6. Superior ramus of the pubic bone 7. Upper inner border of the body of the pubic bone. 8. Upper inner border of the symphysic pubic. Diameters of the brain. Three diameters are measured. The anteposterior diameter is a line from the sacral promontory to the upper border of the symphysic pubic. At the uppermost point of the symphysic pubic, it is called the anatomical conjugate and measures 12 cm. When it is taken to the posterior border of the upper surface, which is about 1.25 cm lower, it is called the austerical conjugate and measures 11 cm. The term true conjugate may be used to refer to either of these measurements. The diagonal diameters is also measured anterior posteriorly from the lower border of the symphysis to the sacral promontory. It measures 12 to 13 cm. The oblique Diameter is a line from one sacroiliac joint to the ilopectineal eminence on the opposite side of the pelvis and measures 12 cm. The transverse diameter it is a line between the points furthest apart on the ilopectineal lines and measures 30 cm. Another dimension, the sacrocotyloid passes from the sacral promontory to the ilopectineal pineal eminence on each side and measures 9 to 7.5 cm. Its importance is concerned with the posterior positions of the occiput when the parietal eminence of the foetal head may become cut. The false pelvis. This is the part of the pelvis situated above the pelvic brain. It is formed by the upper flared heart portions of the iliac bones and protect the abdominal organs but it's of no significance in obstetrics. The false pelvic is the part situated above the pelvic brain. It is of no significance in obstetrics. Types of pelvics and function of pelvics. Four types of pelvics. One, the genchoid pelvix. This is the ideal pelvix for childbearing. Its main feature are the rounded brain, the generous four pelvix, straight side walls, a shallow cavity, with broad, well curved sacrum, blunt ischial spines, a wide sciatic notch, and a public arch of 90 degrees. It is found in women of average build and height. The justominal pelvix, like a gynecoid pelvix in miniature, all diameters are reduced but are in proportion. It is normally found in women of small stature, less than 1.5 m in height with small ends and feet, but is occasionally found in women of normal stature. The outcome of labor in this situation depends on the fetus. If the fetus size is consistent with the size of the maternal pelvix, normal labor and delivery will take place. Features of the four types of pelvix. Features, gynecoid, android, anthropoid, pletopoid, brim, rounded, heart shaped long oval, kidney shaped, Four pelvics, generous, narrow, narrowed, wide, side walls, straight, convergent, divergent, divergent, ischial spines, blunt, prominent, blunt, blunt, sciatic notch, rounded, narrow, wide, wide, subpubic angle, 90 degree, 90 degree, 
90 degree, 90 degree. Incidence, 50%, 20%, 25%, 5%. Two, the android pelvic. This is so called because it resembles the male pelvic. Its brim is at shaped with a narrow four pelvic and has a transverse diameter which is towards the back. The side walls converge, making it a funnel shape with a deep cavity and a straight sacrum. The ischial spines are prominent and the sciatic notch is narrow. The angle of the pubic arc is less than 90 degrees. It is found in short and heavily built women. Android pelvis predisposes to an ossiposterior position of the fetal head. 3. The anthropoid pelvix. This has a long overbrain in which the anteposterior diameter is longer than the transverse. The side walls diverge and the sacrum is long and deeply concave. The ischial spines are not prominent and the sciatic notch is very wide. As is the women with this type of pelvis tend to be tall with narrow shoulders. Labor does not usually present any difficulties. 4. The platypelioid pelvis. This plat pelvis has a kidney shaped brim in which the anteposterior diameter is reduced and the sacrum is flat and the cavity shallow. The ischial spines are blunt and the sciatic notch and the subpubic angle are both wide. Eye assimilation pelvis. This occurs when the fifth lumbar vertebra is fused to the sacrum and the angle of inclination of the pelvic brim is increased. Engagement of the head is difficult, but once achieved, labor progresses normally. Deformed pelvics. Deformation of the pelvis may result from a development anomaly, dietary deficiency, injury or disease. Diagram. The female pelvis. The feature of the female pelvis enhances the process of a childbirth, provided the fertile size is normal. Functions of the female pelvis. Primary function is to allow the movement of the body, especially walking and running. It permits the individual to sit and kneel, transmit the weight of the trunk to the leg, acting as a bridge between the femurs, and also takes the weight of the sitting body onto the ischial tuberosities. Protect the pelvic organs and abnormal organs. The female pelvis is adopted for childbearing. Study section summary. In this study section, you have learned that the features of the female pelvis facilitate the process of childbirth if the fertile size is normal. The pelvic bones, joints, ligaments, and normal shape facilitate the labor process. End of study section one. Thank you for listening.